In the coming weeks and months ahead, there are going to be a lot of images that come out of the Middle East, and they are going to affect different groups of people in different ways. Pay close attention to how people react. You'll know who you can trust and who you can't. In these last days, it was said that one would be taken, another would be left standing right by each other in a field. Many people now are having a wake-up call in this country to the anti-Semites. Many people thought their friends and neighbors were just good Trump-supporting patriots, and now they're realizing where evil lives. And that's not an overstatement. But in today's video, I'm going to share something with you that you can share very easily with them that they'll have no answer for. Absolutely no answer now. Those of you in my generation and before, the Gen Xers and the Boomers, this is something that has been baked into our teaching, baked into our lives for so long that some of us have forgotten to look at it specifically. And when you see it, you'll be like, oh my goodness, of course. Why didn't I think of this? Now, real quick, that word is dominion. And it occurs in Genesis. And it will mean something to us that will mean something completely different to the evil ones. As always, real quick, just wanted to say thank you very much for all of you that showed up at the Florida Maki Patreon channel. One US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked, partnering with Vimeo. We can kind of take the gloves off over there and talk about things in a very, very different way. And I have to leave it basically there because YouTube has its rules. Now, if you'd like to sign up, would love to have you. Could sure use the support. Like I said, if it's not for you, you can watch now hundreds of videos over there all the way through past the end of the year. And still, make your decision then. If it's not for you, full, full refund. No problem. Now, this word, dominion. Many of you remember where it comes from. Who was given dominion over the earth? Adam. But many people don't remember the details of the scripture. Genesis 1, 26 and 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon it upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, the image of God, created he him, male and female, created he them. 28 is where people usually stop reading. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. And subdue it, and have dominion over the, pay attention here, fish of the sea, fowl of the air, and every living thing that moveth upon the earth, period. Every living thing handed to and given dominion over by Adam. Every living thing, dominion by Adam and his descendants. This is my father's world. I rest me in the thought. This is the beginning and the end of it and to those in my generation who grew up going to church, being taught the Bible, and my parents, grandparents. This is so baked into our belief and our value system that sometimes we forget this. That this everything in this world, there's going to be people who say, Israel's an occupier, Israel's an occupier. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. One of you shall set a thousand to flight, two of you ten thousand. This is the banner on the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, and this is the beginning and ending of what that means. You'll be surrounded by your enemies, and they will just stand there. Who's first? You? You? Who's first? I got the first picture of the day here from this article here, and this guy from 2021 actually gets right to the point of how stupid these people are that call Israel occupiers. Quote, Israel has a right of self-defense. Now, this guy is speaking on behalf of Palestine here. This common sense statement is repeated everywhere by state officials and media outlets. He's making the allegation in this article that Israel forfeits its right to, quote-unquote, self-defense by simply being occupiers, by denying, pay attention, 
by denying Palestinians their human rights, including the right of self-determination. Really? Do you think that bothered the Ottomans when they took Spain for 700 years, when they took the southern part of Italy and made it an emirate? Look up the Ottoman Empire. Look how long Muslims conquered and ruled Spain. Did Sp the Spanish, the native Spanish, did they have a right to self-determination when they were being occupied? Not for 70 years. You see, that they're, they're flipping the lid over Israel being there since 1948. The Ottomans occupied, the Muslims occupied Spain for 700 years. They conquered it militarily. What do you think the Spanish Inquisition was all about when they threw them out? They wanted to exterminate what was left of them. Think I'm making it up? Look it up. Understand history. These people, the Islamists, have no leg to stand on when it comes to the idea of occupying territories. You have to be kidding me. Look up the Caliphate of Cordoba. It was a caliphate where people were forced. You see, they some of them didn't even have the option to leave. They were forced to convert to Islam or be beheaded. Sound familiar? Sound familiar? Now, for those of you out there who are more of the um, atheist types, the more sciencey types, he's like, Florida Maquis, I agree with you. I, I think you Christians are a bunch of idiots. You Jews are a bunch of idiots. You Islamists, all Buddhists, all of you, you're just a bunch of morons. Really. How about we talk about this in a sciencey, more of a sciencey way? We have some kids out here and they're playing in a yard. And they're having a good time. And you are sitting there inside your home and you're watching them. Maybe you're uh, babysitting or, you know, maybe one of them, two of them might be a niece or nephew. And out of the corner of your eye, you notice that they don't see a wolf out at the edge of the wood line watching them. Now, if you're just a babysitter, or you're just uh, some distant friend, you might think, well, I better stick my head out the window and call those kids to come in. If you were the type that was given to the use of weapons, you might say, well, I better go walk down the hallway and find my keys to the gun cabinet, and then do the gun cabinet, because, you know, the kids are here, we got everything locked up, and then find that, and then, then get it loaded, then walk out there slow. You see, if you were the parent of one of those kids. You wouldn't see this image this way. You wouldn't see, oh, there's some kids there, and oh, look, there's a wolf. You know what you would see? What every mother would see, every father would see, every grandmother and grandfather, this is what they would see. This is exactly what they would see, and they would literally fly. I don't mean walk, I don't mean run. They would literally fly into that yard and put themselves human physical being in between those kids and that wolf while screaming bloody murder to get the kids inside, perhaps physically encouraging them. Let's just leave it that way to use all great haste to get into safety. They wouldn't bob. They wouldn't stick their head out no window and yell. They wouldn't go walking down the hallway to go get some ballistic weapon. No. They would physically go out there, every mother, every father, older brother, older sister, grandparent. You see, they see the world in a very different way that you do. That's their children. Now, in the colonial times, they would have probably had to put together some type of a hunting party. But what do you know about wolves? Get rid of one, get rid of two, guess what? See, once they know, once they know you have a problem. Now, what could the wolf say? You see, this is how everybody other than Gen X and boomers see wolves. You know, Mr. Mr. Talking Wolf could, could come up and say, now, this area that you have your house in your neighborhood used to be, this used to be our hunting grounds. This used to be our hunting grounds. And it's not very fair of you. It's not very fair of you to occupy Occupy 
our territory. We were here first. Even your Bible says so. Wait, what, Mucky? That's right. Go back in Genesis. God created the animals first. God created animals first before he created man. See, nobody wants to talk about the idea of giving dominion to man. They just want to say, well, we were here first. We were here first. And besides, you know, we've been, we've been howling our heads off for a long time, every single night, trying to warn you that if you didn't leave, that if you didn't leave, something bad was going to happen. If you didn't leave, you know, it's your fault for not, it's your fault for not paying attention to the intelligence that there could have been warning signs. You know, we're, you know, we're going to, we'll make a deal, you know, maybe, you know, we'll only eat one or two of your children, you know, and we can maybe somehow learn to have a two state solution between, you know, we have the wolf state and, you know, then we have the human state and, you know. But there's going to have to be some type of a deal made. Because you see, your super sciencey types don't see any difference between wolves and humans. You see, your atheistic types, they don't see one lick of difference between wolves and humans. The wolves can say, you know, we've peed on every fifth tree between the river and the mountain, and that you haven't been able to smell, it's not our fault. This is our territory. This is our land. We've been hunting this land since long before humans ever came here. Now, if you, if you want to go back to the deal that, you know, the Garden of Eden, you know, you want to go sit under a tree and pick apples, that's fine. But you stay off wolf land. You stay off wolf land. Now, ladies, does this make a little bit more sense when I said when, if you're thinking about perhaps coming apocalypse, coming shit, it's the fan situation, maybe aim a little older for a guy to have around, for a little bit of backup. Even if he's a, maybe a little bit too old, does this make a little more sense? See, because folks from my era, and definitely, definitely my parents' era, about halfway through that little diatribe from Mr. Talking Wolf, you would have heard bang. Loudly. And that would have been it. And we would go back to bed and not lose an ounce of sleep. And then we would call our friends. The next day, hey, had to... Take out a wolf last night. We need to go on a hunt this weekend. And we'd take him out. And none of us, none of us would lose a lick of sleep. See, no matter how stupid you feel, remember, Little Red Riding Hood couldn't figure out a talking wolf in drag wasn't her grandmother. Sound even more familiar? Hmm. Talking wolves in drag. I'll bet I could make a whole video about that, couldn't I? You see, this is the difference between the millennials and Gen X. Millennials are younger. You can forget it. They see the wolf as, you know, we're just occupying their... How many stupid, ridiculous Animal Planet shows? You know, you're in the, you're in the uh, predator's environment, and he has the right to... He doesn't have the right to do anything. He doesn't have the right to do anything. How many of you have seen the the floor the uh, the doormats that have? Uh, it's basically a message from the dog saying that I live here and I slobber all over everything and I get hair all over everything, and you know this is my home and you're just a visitor, so you better respect me. I ever saw, I ever saw a mat like that in front of somebody's house. I would turn rock away and never come back. If our animals had ever done anything to disrespect a guest, in fact, I don't. I don't even remember, to be very truthful, what we the animals went out when we had guests. The animals weren't anywhere within eye shot when we were eating. We had animals, and of course, you take care of them, and you respect them, you don't abuse them. But you don't treat them as equals. You don't treat them as equals. We, the descendants of Abraham have dominion over every living thing. If you're a Bible believer, that means everyone. Period. Including Israel. If you're not a Bible believer and you're just some kind of Looney Tune liberal that doesn't believe in any, any religion whatsoever, okay, we can talk to you too. If you want to go technically, you know, actually, we would technically, all human beings would be occupiers, wouldn't we? We would be, because even our own Bible says that the animals were created first. 
And you can look into science and they can say, even those little lizards that are out running around Florida, apparently I owe all of them an apology because I'm occupying lizard land. I am. I am the lizards, the dinosaurs, you know, the, the chickens. Clearly we owe an apology to the chickens. We need to say, you know what, you're descendants of dinosaurs and dinosaurs were clearly here far long before man. So we're occupying chicken land. We're occupiers. And, and the chickens need to, to rise up and get rid of us, I guess. That's how moronic it is. So, I mean, just going to say, you know, be, be offended if you want to be. But that's just the reality. Hand over your kids to the wolves. Go right ahead. Hand over your kids to the wolves. Those of you that don't want to hand over your kids to the wolves, make decisions a little differently. And I'll leave it there. God bless all of you. Thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. Pray for each other. I'll pray for you. Pray for me. Lift each other up. God bless. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.